Hello and welcome to Live Code Stream, where we not only talk about programming, data science, and artificial intelligence, but we also code. I'm your host, Juan, and today we're going to be solving the password cracker challenge on HackerRank. So let's get started. Password cracker on HackerRank is a challenge that is categorized as with a difficulty of medium and is categorized under the recursion uh, algorithms. So let's see what the problem statement is and then let's analyze how we can solve it. And then finally, we are going to code the solution. So now that we are on my screen, let's read the problem statement together. There are n users registered on a website, cutekittens.com. Oh, each of them has a unique password represented by password at position one, password at position two, password at position n. At, at this very lovely site, many people want to access some awesome cutie pics of the kittens, but the adamant admin does not want the site to be available to the general public. Only those people who have passwords can access it. You, being an awesome hacker, finds a loophole in the password verification system. A string, which is a concatenation of one or more passwords in any order, is also accepted by the password verification system. A password can appear zero or more times in that string. Giving access to each of the end passwords and also have a string login attempt determine whether the string is accepted by the password verification system of the website if all of the <laughs> login attempt string can be created by concatenating password strings, it is accepted. For example, if there are three users with passwords, Abra, Ka, Dabra, then some of the valid combinations are Cabra, Cadabraca, Cadabraabra, and so on. Supplying Abra, Ka, Dabra concatenated passes the authentication. Function description. Complete the password cracker function in the editor below. It should return the passwords as a single string in the order required by the password to be accepted, each separated by a space. It, if it is not possible to form the string, return the string wrong password. Password Cracker has the following parameters. Passwords is a list of the password strings and the login attempt, the string to attempt to create. All right, so let's take up one of the examples they have here. And they provide this, uh, this really nice set of examples. So we're gonna copy and paste them and we're gonna take them to our Visual Studio code. Here we go, I use that. And then we are gonna take a look at the sample outputs uh, for each one of them, which are this as follows. So we don't need the numbers actually, we just need each one of the individual cases. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put together the input parameters with the solution. So the solution for the first exercise uh, will be this. The solution for the second exercise will be wrong password. And the solution for the third exercise will be A, B, C, D. All right, let's get started. Let's see what we can do. So when we take a look to the first uh, algorithm, so the first thing we receive is an array with all the different passwords. So remember that, that always the first parameter is actually an array. So we can actually separate it like this. And then we get a string and, and this string is could be either using the words from the arrays on top or could be not. In the case it is, we just must place uh, the, the words on the right order so that we can construct the original string. And in the case we can't, we just will print the, the wrong password. So the best way to approach an, uh, a problem like this or the first thing that comes into my mind uh, is to set recursion. And, and, and how will that work actually? So let's take an example to the first case, right? So I'm gonna take the first scenario right here. So we have the input and we have the words. So I'm gonna be looking at the string here on the top and then I'm gonna be looking at the words. So I'm gonna first start with the array on the top. I'm gonna be iterating through one, each one of the elements of the array and see if, the, if there's a match in the string below. So I'm gonna start with the word because and clearly the array doesn't or the text doesn't start with the word because 
So because it's not a solution for the as a placeholder for the first word, can the same, do, must, but we, when we get to we, we have we here. So in our first iteration, we can say this, our solution may start with the word we. And then we put a space, right? Uh, so now we know uh, the combination for these two. So we can remove we from the uh, from the string and, and we do the next, the same for the next one. So next, we have the word because, it doesn't fit. The word can, it doesn't fit. But the word do, the word do actually fits. So we put do there. And then we do the same with the rest. So the next word will be what? The next word will be we again. And then it will be must. And then it will be because. And then it will be we again and can. Awesome. So let's see if now this matches with the solution we are expecting. And actually it does. We do what we must because we can. We do what we must because we can. So this seems like a solid solution for us. So let's take a look what happened to the second scenario. In the second scenario, we have hello planet and hello world. I think this is quite obvious. Uh, so we can match the word hello with the word hello here in the dictionary or in the array. But then the, when we want to match the word hello, there is no coincidence. So this is clearly a wrong password. And the same will apply for the last one. Uh, so for the last scenario, we have A, B, A, B, C, D, and C, D. So clearly the first match will be A, B. The second match will be C, D. But we can also match with one of the words entirely. So that could also be a solution. So with this in mind, now we can start coding. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix one word at a time. And then when that word is fixed because we find a solution there, we're going to shift to the right. And we're going to do the same process. And we're going to do that process one and one time again until we go through the whole string and hopefully find the solution. All right, so let's jump into hacker rank now and let's try to crack these passwords. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to check we have a, a password cracker function uh, which has as an input the passwords uh, array and the login attempt which is our string. So the first thing we're going to do we are going to check if we if we manage to get to the end. Remember, this is going to be a, recurs a recursive function. Uh, so we are going to ask if the login attempt, if the if the len of the login attempt is equal equal to zero, that means we are at the end of the array. We are going to return true because we we actually uh, finalize the array. I'm going to return an an, an empty brackets because this. And, and so every time we, we do a return from this function, we are going to return two parameters. Uh, one is a Boolean, determining whether the solution was successful or not for that step. And the second one will be the word that we actually match in that step. In this case, there's nothing to match on, but we, are, we arrive to the end. So we are going to return two, and we are not going to return anything to concatenate yeah, to the solution. So once we have that done, uh, the next thing we can do is we need to start looping through the passwords. So for password in passwords, and we are going to ask if the login attempt starts with our word password. And if it does, we are going to say, so if it does, so we found a potential solution, now we need to move to the right. So, so to move to the right, uh, we need to call the same function, the password cracker, uh, which I'm actually going to rename to process step. So this function will actually be to process each one of the steps. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. So now we're going to call our process step and we need to pass our list of passwords. A list of passwords is always passed the same way because we don't really need to alter the list of passwords. It's always going to be the same because we can reuse it. But when we when it comes to the string, when it comes to the string, we actually need to reduce the string um, because we already found a word. So now we need to move to the right. So we are going to pass the login attempt and we are going to pass it uh, from the length of the password all throughout to the end, right? So we shift it to the end. So yeah, we need to capture the solutions for this. So if this was a valid solution and if it was a valid solution, what was the result of it? And now what we are going to do is 
if we actually got a valid solution we're gonna return true all right so that step was successful and we are gonna return our password right so we know this that the one that was a solution and we're gonna concatenate our password which what we have from the right right so we fix this word and then we put everything we found on the right side okay so now we are returning true so what else we need to do well we found the word we move to the right and we do this recursively so that i think that will be the end of it so the next thing we need to do is what happens if there is no match at all right so we're gonna return false and we're gonna return an empty uh, an empty array there so we make sure that that everything here is fine um so let's do one more thing now so let's define again our password kraken function we're gonna name it exactly how they have it here though i prefer to use snake case and and, and this will actually wait for the passwords as well and for the login attempt and you'll see now why the reason uh, we created a separate function called the process step uh, is that when we call um when we call here the solution and the result and then we pass the process step what we need to do if this fails is slightly different so it's easier to do it here than to do it in the recursion because in the recursion you lose track of in which level you are if you are at the first call or if you are at the last call or, or somewhere in the middle so i prefer to do it this way um, so we are going to simply call the function passing the passwords and the login attempt and then we are going to say if we have a solution we are going to return the array result joined by spaces right so this is actually very nice in python how you do this uh, and if not if we didn't find a solution, we are going to return. Uh, actually, we need to return this. We're going to return wrong password, which is the fixed string we needed to use. All right. So I think uh, I think this is pretty good. So let's try and, sub and run the code to run against the first two test cases to see how that goes. Make making sure we don't have any typos or anything like that. Oh, awesome. It just passed. So now let's submit the code and see what happens. Now, I'm not very optimistic of this approach. Um, and the reason why is, uh, so we let our recursions go loose. So we don't have any caching mechanism. We don't, we, don't, we don't have any way to exit promptly the recursions. So if we have very big strings, it may take some time to resolve, or we may go very deep in the recursion. And, and there's a limit that Python can do uh, for recursion functions. We can, of course, adjust that. All right, so we got back the results now. Your code did not execute within the time limit. Uh oh. Okay, so let's scroll down. So we see, we see a lot of them actually failed. Some of them passed. Yeah, maybe 30, 70. So 70 percent of them fail. So let's try and fixing that. So, so usually with these kind of problems, there are two steps you can take. Uh, the first one is to evidently increase. Uh, the recursion limit uh, so for that we can import uh, sis so sys and we can there's a function called set recursion limit and we, we're gonna increase that value and i'm gonna put 200,000. i don't think we need so much just to be on the safe side um we're gonna do that and then the next thing we're gonna do is we are, we're gonna memoize this function and the term memoize if you are like a react developer or a javascript developer you're probably familiar with it um, if you're not, if you're a Python developer um, and you're not familiar with it, I'm going to kind of like explain how it, how it works. Uh, so the, 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 the very basic concept is you're going to use, um, you're going to use a, uh, a dictionary uh, or, or, or a data structure to store the values that we already processed and we know the result for. So one important thing that uh, uh, that is in the solution here or in the problem statement is that it doesn't matter the order in which we provide the words so meaning that if we found a solution or or if we found something that failed and we already we are already seeing the same pattern again yeah let's say for example we have the words a b and the words a b uh, are repeated again in our in our scenario right because first we evaluated with one word and then the next one we evaluated with another combination of words but at the end of the day we we find out the same we are, we are finding on the same place of the array 
Um, so we're gonna kind of like cache that because if, if we got there already and it didn't work out, we don't actually need it to do it again, right? We don't need to set the recursion loose again. We just can uh, finalize it uh, before. But let's see how that looks like. So I'm gonna create a dictionary in Python called uh, the memo. It's important that the memo uh, remains as a global variable so that we can use it in each one of our functions. So we're gonna go into every time we call our password cracker function. Uh, so we're gonna initialize our memo. So we're gonna use global memo and then we're gonna initialize it as an empty dictionary. And then what we are going to do is uh, we are going to modify our process step. So in the case we are finding a solution, we're going to add the solutions to our memo. So memo in the position of login attempt is going to be equal to true. We don't really care about what the result was um, or, or anything else. We, we just know this is a solution and we, we just want to store the value because if we have already seen this, we don't need to process it again. And, and so now we know we saw it, we already saw it. So now let's make sure uh, we don't reprocess this thread or this recursion uh, section. So we are going to ask if login attempt in memo. Sorry for the brackets, they go automatically nowadays. I'm doing a lot of JavaScript lately. And we're gonna return false, of course, uh, because we don't wanna process that. And this is not a solution. Um, if in the past this was a solution, we already have one, we don't need to do this anymore. And in the case it wasn't, uh, then we just return false because if it wasn't before, it's not gonna be now, right? So we close now the brackets and I think that's pretty much it. So let's run our code again, just to make sure we didn't broke anything. Awesome, that still works. So now let's submit the code and see what happens. So we failed again, miserably. So let's see what happened. So we set our recursion limit, so that's good. Uh, we set our memo. Oh, yeah, yeah, guys, 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 guys. Why didn't you let me know? So we are using the variable memo here. But we are using it local because we never we never said it was coming from the global scope. So global memo. Rookie mistake. I'm sorry. Well, let's try that again. So we set our recursion limit. We put a nice number there and that's not a problem. The problem is we're taking it so long. So we are looking into the login attempts. Um, oh yes. So when, when we discussed about it and, and, and we talk about the memoizing function, we said that it doesn't matter if the, if the, if the memo, if our dictionary of the things we saw already it actually solved or not because we already saw it so we we don't care we don't need to process it again and and the way this is being done is if i find a solution i'm gonna memoize it so i'm only storing in in, in the in the resolved pieces cache when i found a solution but not when i didn't yeah guy i know i know guys i know my bad so let's do that right up here So whenever I find the word, I memoized, and now it doesn't matter what if, if the piece on the right solves or not, the login attempt gets stored. So let's try to hit that again one more time. Crossing your fingers, guy. Cross your fingers. This is gonna work out. Yeah, look how fast. Unbelievable. Congratulations. We did it. And it only took three attempts or four. So that was it, right? So that was solving the password cracker on HackerRank. I hope that you really enjoyed my solution. If you really like this video, please leave the like uh, using the, the button here below on the screen. Also subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be regularly uploading new content on programming challenges, tutorials, and more. I'm Juan and thanks for watching. See you the next time.